Today's lesson is called Special Segments and Triangles. We're going to take our triangles and we are going to add segments to them. Those segments are going to have names like median, altitude, perpendicular, bisector, and angle, bisector. Um, please get out these notes from last week. We did the front of these notes, but we never filled in the back right here where it says Special Segments. So get those notes out. So we're going to dive right in. Each of these special segments has a job to do. So really what we're going to learn today is their job description. What is your job and what does that look like in a triangle? So we're actually going to start with the very last one on your sheet because it's the one you really already know about, this one right here, the last one. In that blank, write the word angle bisector. Since this isn't new, we won't spend a long time on it. An angle bisector is technically a ray, underline that word, and this ray divides an angle into two congruent angles. So an angle bisector's job is to cut the angle in half. What symbols do you add to the picture when you have an angle bisector? Very good. So when you draw an angle bisector, you add arcs to your picture. You have bisected the angle. Now, when you draw an angle bisector in a triangle, do you, let's say that angle bisector, OS, do you bisect the side as well? Do you cut BG in half as well as angle O? Always, sometimes, or never. If an angle bisector cuts an angle in half, then it cuts the opposite side in half. Always, sometimes, or never. If you're saying sometimes, what do you think are the times when it would cut the opposite side in half? Equilateral, isosceles, great guesses. Okay, the next word, we're going to go to the very first word on your special segments, this one right here, median, median. So a median is a segment whose endpoints are a vertex and the midpoint of the opposite side. I want everyone to underline, circle, highlight the word midpoint. I want you to think, Median, midpoint, median, midpoint. Every time you hear median, picture Miss Tan saying midpoint, median, midpoint. So, a median's job, remember these all have jobs. We're talking job descriptions today. Its job is to begin, it doesn't really begin anywhere, but whatever. It's to pass through an angle and to pass through the midpoint of the opposite side. How do we indicate that a point is a midpoint? How do we indicate that on our diagram? Tick marks. Very nice. So how do we indicate an angle bisector? Arcs. How do we indicate a median? Tick marks. So when we draw a median in our triangle, I recommend first locating the midpoint. The midpoint. The midpoint. So your median should have tick marks on either side of that point, and then you connect the angle, the vertex, to the midpoint of the opposite side. Vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. The only time a median is going to do double duty and also be an angle bisector is in this triangle right here. What kind of triangle do you think that is? Oh, no, Alex. There's no certain vertex. I just told you to draw it from there. Maybe I, maybe I didn't tell you, but anyway. Um, so every triangle has three medians and three angle bisectors. There's not just one. I just didn't want the picture to get too busy. <coughs> so yes, in an equilateral triangle and an isosceles triangle, the median will also be an angle bisector. No other triangle will that happen. Our next word on our list is altitude. This one might be new to us. Underline the word perpendicular. The altitude's job and his job description, his only job is to be perpendicular to the line containing the opposite side. Be perpendicular to the line containing the opposite side. So when it's the angle bisector, you add arcs. When it's a median, you add tick marks. When it's an altitude, you add 
a square, a box, a 90 degree angle marking, whatever you would like to call it. So it is the perpendicular segment from a vertex, from a vertex to the line containing the opposite side. Do you notice in the definition how it said to the line containing the opposite side? That should have been kind of curious to you. It didn't say to the opposite side like the median did. It said to the line containing the opposite side. And the reason that it had to say that is because when our triangle when our triangle is obtuse, that altitude is going to fall outside the triangle. When it is acute, it will fall inside the triangle. And when it's a right triangle, where will it fall? On. Yeah, so, outside, inside, on. Outside, inside, on. Um, that's just the one from angle A. If you had drawn it from angle B on that obtuse triangle, it would fall inside, okay, if you drew it from angle B. So, it's not the case the whole time. But you need to be perpendicular to the opposite side. There's no way to start here and be perpendicular. None of those are perpendicular. So you had to resort to the altitude falling, falling outside the triangle, which is totally allowed. When would an altitude lie outside a triangle? And when would an altitude also be the side of a triangle? So that's what we just talked about, right? When it is obtuse and when it is right. Not all three altitudes will lie outside or on, but there will be some that do. Okay. Next word, last word, perpendicular bisector. This segment has the hardest job of them all. This segment has to do two things, and we've already learned about what a perpendicular bisector is. This special segment needs to be perpendicular at the midpoint. So it's underline perpendicular and underline, underline midpoint. Circle and underline, highlight them. Now notice this guy is like an odd guy out. Look at WS, which is the perpendicular bisector. What's different about WS than all of the other special segments? Right. It's not going through a vertex. So apparently it doesn't have to go through a vertex. So what do we add to our picture when something is a perpendicular bisector? Invisible line, no. You add two things. You have to add 90 degrees, a box, and your tick marks. Good. So when we're studying special segments, there's always going to be two special cases. These two special cases work for all of the special segments. If our triangle is isosceles or equilateral, then the perpendicular bisector goes through the vertex. And if that perpendicular bisector goes through a vertex, then it is all four special segments. So in these two cases, that dotted line is an angle bisector, a median, an altitude, and a perpendicular bisector. It is all four of them. So for those two cases, if you're one of the special segments, you are all four of the special segments. Through all angles of an equilateral triangle, that will work through all of those, and that will work only through the vertex angle on this one. Okay, let's practice a few of these. Name and altitude. Go. Very nice. B, F, what gave it away? The right angle marking, right? Name a median. Go. C, D, awesome. What gave it away? The tick mark. Name an angle bisector. This is silly, right? A, E, technically it's a ray. And what gave it away? The arcs. Okay. Classify the following segments. RQ. What is the name for RQ? Good. 
Good. Nice. You have to look at what job it's doing. Whatever job it's doing will say what special segment it is. RQ is being perpendicular to the opposite side. So it is an altitude. Okay, SV. You know you wanted to. Okay, so this one is important to talk about. You can also just do perpendicular and bisector. There we go. Um, when a segment is both a median and an altitude, which this one is, SV is a median, SV is an altitude, but you don't call it either one of those. It, it received a promotion. So don't call it a median, don't call it an altitude, call it a perpendicular bisector because that word does both jobs. So you want to make sure you're naming both jobs that it does. Last one, are you? RU is only a median because the only markings I see are tick marks. I don't see arcs. I only see tick marks. Segment ED is a perpendicular bisector. Which of the following can be determined? So just circle the ones that can be determined. All right, so if we're told that this is a perpendicular bisector, there are two things we can do to this picture. Perpendicular bisector. So every time, if it has two words, perpendicular bisector, you mark two things. One for perpendicular, one for bisector. Now let's see which of the following can be determined. Measure angle A, B, E. Well, of course it can be determined. It is 90 degrees because of the word perpendicular. The distance from A to E. We determine how long segment A E is. Mm, not enough information. Cannot determine. The measure of angle A, B, C. The measure of that angle. Well, triangle thumb, thumb theorem says the angles of a triangle add up to 180. But if I only know one angle, I can't possibly find the other two unless they're congruent or something. So, cannot determine. A, C, the distance from A to C. Now, I couldn't find the distance from A to E, but I can find the distance from A to C because of those tick marks. 11, 11. 22. The measure of angle A, E, B. Actually, we can determine the measure of that angle because we know two angles of the three angles. And the distance from E to B. I have no idea how long that perpendicular bisector is, but I sure know what its jobs are. Cool. So we're given triangle FAR. Far. FM is 6x plus 10. MR is 8x minus 5, and FR is 75. Find X is segment AM, a median. So how would we start by solving this problem? How would we begin? We were given this, we were given this, and we were given this. Oh my goodness, flashback. It feels like we are in unit 1, the segment addition postulate, yes? Yeah? Part plus part equals whole. So 14x plus 5 equals 75. 14x equals 70. That looks like a lot. What did you get for x? x equals 5. And then to really answer our question, we need to plug x back in. 6 times 5 plus 10. And 8 times 5 minus 5. Oh my goodness. It looks like a median, but it was not. So our answer is no. So we solve for x, we use segment addition, then we plugged it back in. Yeah. If NM is an altitude of triangle NOP, solve for x and the measure of angle 1. Remember that all of these segments have a job to do. What is an altitude's job? You do have to memorize these. These are not on your formula chart. Job is to be 
perpendicular to the opposite side. So in M, your only job in life is to make a 90 degree angle. So what we're not going to do is add 2x plus 4x minus 14. We are not going to add those, and that's what students go to right away. They try to add those, and they don't know what to do next. What we are going to do is set the angle that we know is 90 degrees equal to 4x minus 14. Are we okay with how to start this? You could do this again on the quiz on Friday. This won't be on tomorrow's quiz, but Friday's quiz, yes. So solve for x and find the measure of angle 1. The only way to find the measure of angle 1 is to find the measure of angle O. So, plug x in right here. 19 times 2. So this is 38. This one's 90, and this one is missing. So we can just do 90 minus 38. Final answer. 62. Yep. Promise, last problem. Segment OL is a perpendicular bisector. Stop right there and mark your picture. Perpendicular bisector. Very important to mark both things. Yep. GA is 12. OL is 8. And the measure angle A is 53. Find LOG. And OG. Oh, geez. The first sounds like I was saying. Whoa, guys. What are we going to do here? Let's start by doing something with that 12. What do you want to do with the 12? Base angles, we can do that first, too. Base angles. Well, okay. So you're already jumping straight to the fact that it's an isosceles triangle, right? So we learned that when a perpendicular bisector goes through a vertex, it only does that two times. The only times it goes through a vertex is for isosceles or equilateral. So you're right. This has to be, this is going through a vertex. That is rare. That is very rare. So that means that this triangle is either isosceles or equilateral. Well, if one of the angles are 53, it can't be equilateral. So you're right. It is an isosceles triangle. You're right. So now we can go ahead and find that green angle. It's 90 minus 53. 37. But now for my favorite part, that 12 has been bisected because of perpendicular bisector. How can we find OG? We have to use something from a while ago. OG. How'd you like that trick? <laughs> Pythagorean theorem, yes. A squared plus B squared equals OG squared. What is it? Good job. The answer is 10. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So you do 6 squared plus 8 squared, and then you take the square root of 100. Yay. Do your homework.